Hey guys, it's Alex with Hammond Watch, uh, here today with the SNZH53. It is the blue Seiko 55 Fathoms uh, from the Seiko 5 Sport lineup. Um, it's got 100 meters of water resistance, and it's a watch that I have kind of steered away from. Uh, I think that, you know, specs and cost consider, there are some watches that, that maybe offer a little bit more in the price range, uh, but it's certainly an attractive piece and uh, wanted to run through kind of you know the concerns I had with it you know what's kind of bummed me out about it and we'll get in and, and have a look at it because uh, truthfully the the dial and bezel are the stars of the show with this piece um, ended up getting this actually had a little dust up at work a uh, co-worker ended up purchasing this for me out of a, a deal that was struck uh, so in it for zero dollars I'm pretty thrilled but uh, Joma Shop sold it to him for $169. Uh, it is the made in Japan version. Um, the K models and the J models of Seiko are the exact same watches, uh, just manufactured in different countries. When it's a small $10, $15 difference, you know, I prefer to get the made in Japan, but uh, I'm not going to pay a, a crazy premium for it. I, I just don't think that it, it's really worth it. So we'll just run through the measurements really quickly. Uh, I measured the case um, in between notches because I wanted kind of the true feel for it at a 41.5 millimeters. Uh, you have a 22 millimeter lug, so you're in luck with a, a standard size there. Uh, something that worried me about the watch and reading about the, the specs was the thickness. You know, it, it is 14 and a quarter, but, you know, a little sliver of that is going to be the dome on the Hardlex crystal. Uh, I measured from the, the top of the ring that rests against the glass uh, and got tw right around 12.5 from, from the bottom of the case. So, you know, not as chunky as it had looked in pictures to me. Um, and speaking of it in pictures, you can see why it's a popular watch. Uh, the glass insert uh, provides a, a really nice touch. Uh, the hands, nice, simple sword hands. Uh, I think a very classy layout. You have polishing on the sides and, and then brushing on the top of your lugs. Um, simple kind of all the way across. Uh, your crown is not a screw in. This is a dive style watch and not a, an actual dive watch. Um, if you're looking for Seiko dive watches, that's going to be in their, their prospects lineup. Um, a few things that, that were kind of a bummer, um, the bezel in true Seiko fashion doesn't quite line up. Uh, you can see we're just off center to the right and then the next click off center to the left. Um, something else I really didn't take into account when, when picking up the watch. So you can see there's like the slant on the inside of that glass insert letting you see some of the uh, numeral underneath it and some of the, the marker like the triangle. You know, it's not bad. It's a little bit annoying when you're looking at the dial to constantly see those little pieces, you know, but if, if it doesn't bother you, the, those little reflections, then, you know, more power to you. I, I just, uh, it's something that I didn't see in very many pictures. You'll see the grooves or, or notches out of the side of the bezel are, are very deep and pronounced. Uh, it makes it very, very satisfying to operate. Outside of the misaligned bezel, uh, I love everything about the watch's look. Um, certainly into this um, onslaught of vintage-inspired watches that, that have been coming out recently. You know, I'm all about it. I, I think some of the best designs that are already out there and just need to be kind of reinvented with, with modern practices to, to make sure we're getting the, the creature comforts involved. Um, you'll see the framed date window, um, day and date. It is a 7S36 watch. Uh, 36 just refers to it carrying a uh, day and date. Uh, it's got a display case back. We'll, we'll flip over to it. So if you've seen any of my other videos with, with 7S or 4R or, or NH movements, you'll know that, that I'm not really a fan of the display case back. Um, you know, I like that you get to see the little machine, but at the same time, they really don't make an effort to decorate these lower end models, which I get. Now, I'm fine with, you know, you want to keep it at a cheap price point, but you also want to try to create a watch that's as feature rich as possible. And a display case back certainly falls in that. Um, it's just not the most uh, beautiful movement in the world. Uh, it's a 21,600 beats per hour movement. So you're looking at about five ticks per second. Uh, operates within negative 20 seconds plus 40 a day. 
So, you know, you, you get what you pay for, but the service intervals with these are phenomenal. You know, I've seen 10 year old 7S watches still keeping within that, you know, plus 40 range. Um, and that's just uh, an incredible testament to, to how durable they are. So here's the watch on my seven and a third inch wrist. Uh, as you can see, it's big enough and chunky enough to have presence, uh, but it's certainly not overpowering. I thought in, in photos I had seen previously that it was gonna wear just a, a little bit bigger and a little clumsier. Um, but especially on a, a rubber strap, it fits very nicely. I wish there was a, a cheap Jubilee option. I've, I've seen some fit and kind of forced on. Uh, I'm not going to do that. If you guys know of a, a cheap Jubilee for these Seiko 5s, you know, please let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to get one in and, and have a look at it. Um, let's see how it, how it glows with, with the lights out. Although I will say it's pretty clear that this watch was made for daylight. Uh, given how shiny it is, it, it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, um, but in, in true Seiko form, it, it certainly has visibility in low light. So as you can see, the loom works very well on the hands. You only get a, a small dot at the end of each indice. Uh, I, I do like that they did the tip of the seconds hand, but again, I mean, this is a dive style watch. It's not meant to be used underwater. Uh, the visibility is almost an afterthought. It, this is more of a, a style statement than it is anything else. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to take that into account that not every watch has to have um, incredible luminescence. All in all, I mean, it, it's got its shortcomings like every other watch, but at the end of the day, it, it's very attractive and affordable. So I, I completely understand having it in your collection. You know, mine's gonna be a, a work trophy and stick around for, for quite some time. So <laughs> I get it. Um, in the beginning though, I mentioned staying away from it. Just, you know, if you're looking for a dive watch and you, you know, you want to stay under that $150 mark or right around it, look at Orient, the, the Orient Ray, the Mako, the Mako XL, you'll get an in-house movement just like this, but you'll get a screw down crown and an actual fully functioning diver. You know, if this is just going to be one of many pieces in your collection, by all means, you know, go for it. It's just not what I would suggest to anyone maybe just starting out and trying to find a, an everyday watch. Hope you guys have enjoyed the content. If you're not already, go ahead and hit subscribe. Give us a, a thumbs up. It, it helps out our analytics quite a bit. Uh, I'll also throw another couple of videos up on the side. Uh, have a look. Let us know what you like, what you don't, what you want to see. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.